So I'm a Shakespeare nerd. I did Shakespeare camp in high school. I studied Shakespeare in college. I used to go down to the Globe Theater and stand in the Groundlings section and see shows while I lived in London. And in 2020, I have been attempting to read all 38 of Shakespeare's plays. I have read 12 so far, and I have some thoughts about some of them. Okay, Henry VI parts 1, 2, and 3. Really hard to follow. There are just so many betrayals and backstabbings and shifting loyalties. Henry VI becomes king when he's a baby. He has no idea how to run the country, and frankly, he has no interest in it. He doesn't like it. He would rather be studying theology. And there's this other noble family, the Yorks, who used to be the ruling dynasty. They've been overthrown, and they want power back. I think my favorite part is when King Henry just gives up and agrees to give his kingdom to the York family once he dies, and then his French wife, Queen Margaret, is just like, F that, I didn't marry into this family to not give birth to kings, and she basically decides to take over King Henry's army for a while and actually beats the York family back. There's also a bunch of drama in the beginning around Joan of Arc, this girl who takes over the French army for a while and actually does well against the English. She's portrayed as, uh, shall we say, not a virgin who's seduced King Charles of France. You know, the whole attitude in Shakespeare towards women leading armies is really weird. It's kind of treated as a last resort and unnatural, except every time women take over, they start winning. Taming of the Shrew is a weird play. Right, you got Katarina, she's supposed to be a shrew, right, this nasty woman who hates all men. Really, she just doesn't want to play weird mind games with the men who want to marry her. She wants to be treated like a person. True, she does break a musical instrument over a guy's head, but it's only after he's disguised himself as a music teacher to seduce her sister. Essentially, she's punished for having a low tolerance for BS. And then Petruchio, the guy who decides he wants to marry her for her money, comes up with this plan to tame her by essentially acting so insane whenever they're together that she can't think of any possible comebacks. In the end, she finds out her dad has already promised her to him and just says, okay, this is my life now. If you're not good with gore, I don't recommend you go to see Titus Andronicus, unless you're willing to see a girl's tongue get bitten off, a guy's hand chopped off, two brothers baked into pies. But if you're squeamish like me, Titus Andronicus is actually kind of a fun play to read because it reads like the world's best soap opera. Titus is this revered Roman general who goes through all these absurd lengths to avenge his family. But in the first scene of the play, he kills his own son for standing in his way. There's a wicked goth queen who seduces the Roman emperor, a mixed race baby that gets born out of wedlock. It's like every trope about sex and race and gender and drama and it's just a wildly crazy mashup and I recommend it. I will keep you updated on my quixotic quest to read all the plays this year. See you again soon.